Hello everyone and happy Friday. Welcome to Adobe Live. Um, we are hosting the first segment of the year of Designing XD. I'm Ainsley Wagoner here with my colleague Hillary. Hi everyone, I'm Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> we're both designers on the Adobe XD team and we're really excited to show you all some new features today that just came out a few days ago in our January release. So, um, Hello and welcome. Hi to everyone in the chat. Happy Friday uh, afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, hi, Abdullah and Eric and Kara and Dave and Marius and Tim. Um, Eric, that's really nice. We love working on XD. We love making it awesome for you all. And that's what we're always thinking about. Um, so today on Designing XD, we are going to talk about, like I mentioned, um, some of the new features in our January release. Primarily, we're going to talk about content aware groups. And is that the main thing we're talking about? Yeah, the main, the main big thing. And then you're gonna be talking about another fun little feature. Yeah, another little feature at the end. Um, so I think I, hi Wes and hi Lindsay, I think, I, I don't know how much this is uh, interesting to you all, but I always like to sort of tell people what we work on on mm -hmm. XD um, because it's, I think, kind of fun to put a face to the features. For sure. So I have, let's see, right now I'm working on things that aren't going to be public for many months, <laughs> but I'm working on things related to components right now and helping you work better with your components. And then in the past, I've worked on things like responsive resize and adding blend modes to XD and um, other features that are, are coming later. And Hillary has worked on a lot of things on XD. <laughs> uh, so I, when I first started, I think my first major project was components. So it was taking symbols to components, so it was kind of a big refresh for us. Yeah. Um, and then last year we worked on states as well, um, and some exciting new features this year that I get the pleasure to collaborate with Ainsley on, so. Yeah, so Hillary is, is the designer, along with Alex Paterek, who comes on uh, Designing XD sometimes, um, behind states, which is a really amazing feature that we all are so glad to have. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited about it. And we're gonna do a little bit of a refresh on components and states as we walk through uh, content to wear layout today. Yeah, we're really pumped to show you all this new stuff. So I think with that, we will jump into designing and we'll take a look at, at Hillary's screen. Okay, so just to kick us off, um, I like to do a little refresh of what we were doing before this feature came out and then how this feature improves that workflow. Um, so I'm gonna just start out by creating a button. Uh, let's zoom in. And uh, I'm gonna just apply a thicker border to this real quick so we can all see it. Maybe a color. And then we've got our text label make it a little bit bigger a very large button for demo sake okay so um i've got my two elements and i group them so uh, you may make these into a component and then start reusing these throughout your designs and one of the things uh, that you're likely going to do in your designs is change the label based off of whatever uh wherever you're using it so in the past to do that, I'm gonna click in. Um, I'm gonna make sure that my, my property setting is center so that it grows in both directions. And I'm gonna change my label. And then I have to go in, maybe I have to do some math um, to make sure that the padding on either side is the same. 
Um, there's some other tricks that people uh, would do in the past where maybe they keep these like fake spacers in here. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted my padding to be, I don't know, 20 in width, I would just line that up and then turn the opacity down. I'm actually gonna copy that. Yeah, and this is something to, to sort of have a peek behind the curtain a little bit. On, on the XD design team, we have a UI kit that we use that, that are these elements that you all are seeing. Like everything that you're seeing, we have UI, um, we have components for. And prior to having this feature, we did that little, we do this little trick of having the spacers that have opacity of zero, but that means that when we resize, there's just something there giving those little guides. So you can see that on, on Hillary's screen. Yeah, so you can see as I resize it, now I can, I have those guides in there to see where I'm actually gonna snap to and make sure that that padding is the same. So this is a pretty simple element and it actually takes a lot in order to make sure that it's all aligned. Um, so I'm gonna move down here. I'm actually gonna bring this with me. I have these little artboards to remind me what I'm gonna show you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna show what this is like without, um, with the padding feature. So I'm just gonna remove my spacers from here. I already have my group set. Um, and I'm gonna go over here to the PI, which I'll just show you really quickly. Um, and we, PI is shorthand oh, for property, property inspector. inspector. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll use jargon and then we'll explain it and then you'll know the jargon too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here I've got, I'm selecting just my text and you don't see that padding feature here in the property inspector. Um, and same with when I just have my background layer. Um, selected. So it, it's something that you apply to a group. So I'm going to group it again. And now I have that padding feature here. And when I flip it on, um, you're going to see that some of these controls come up. And what it's doing is actually reading the padding on each side. So here I'm clicked into this one that says 12. And you can see that it's showing that this is the top padding. And it's also showing that on canvas and what that property is. Um, the same will happen if I click through and you can see this is the right, the bottom, and the side. So I can adjust things in here. So if I want this to be 22, um, I can type in my value, but I can also adjust these things on Canvas. And so I'm gonna just show you guys some, um, uh, some keyboard shortcuts, and I'll just type them to the side for you as awesome. well. Let me just type them real quick so you guys can follow along if you want to. So Amin is asking if you can go from a Adobe XD design to a real website. So um, short answer, no, you can't make a website in XD. You can design and we get you very, very close. So you can do all of your design, you can prototype in XD, you can show all the interactions and then you can export developer specs from XD. And so that gets you right up to the edge of where a developer then comes in and, and really gets into the code. But XD does not let you um, design something that, that exports actual code. Correct, yes. Okay, so jumping back into this. So I have the keyboard shortcuts up here for you if you want to follow along. Um, so there's three. So the first one is tilde. And what that's going to allow you to do is as I as I click into my group, I can hit the tilde button and it's going to let me hover over the different padding. And then I can actually just go in here and adjust it one by one. Um, and then I also have tilde and option if I want to mirror um, the changes on top and bottom or left and right. And that's similar to resize behavior, right? Exactly, yeah. And then you also have shift and you can adjust the padding on all four sides. Cool. So super convenient. Um, so I'm actually gonna do a tilde option and bring this in a little bit so it looks more like a button. Okay, so now we're going to, oh, that is a good question. The shortcut for Windows I, don't, I, I, mean, I assume they're the same. Um, I think the tilde would be the same. Maybe the option would be alt. Yeah. 
that makes sense. And then the shift would be the same. Yeah. Um, okay, so now what I can do is change the text in my button. Because I have the padding feature turned on, um, it's actually going to maintain that as I change the button, uh, the button text. So if I change the text here, it's going to automatically resize the background. That's really cool. So if you blinked and missed it, we're, dim we're demoing content aware. Um, is that the technical name of the feature? Yeah, so the feature is called content aware. Um, it it services itself as padding uh, because we'll be adding other features to content aware as the year goes through. Yeah. It's amazing. So now instead of having to re manually resize a button every time you change the text inside, you can set up rules from the beginning to maintain padding on buttons. So this is a this is pretty huge for workflow, it, and it, it's also just a smart way of working because I think we all know that buttons have different um, different text in them, and so not having to do this um, manual resize is, is such a time saver. So I'm going to now make a few adjustments, but first I'm going to show you what you would have to do again today. So I've ungrouped it to remove the padding feature here, and I'm going to uh, okay, I could have just turned it off. So it, it actually still is a group. Um, I'm going to try and add an icon in here now. And I saved one. I'm actually going to break it from being a component so we can, we're going to deal with components later. Um, so I want to add this into this button. So what I would have to do t without the padding feature is um, I'm going to place it kind of where I want it. I'm going to I'm going to uh, copy it and then click into my group and paste it in here. And then I would, you know, maybe I have those um, smart space or those that little hack with the spacers on it. I'm going to readjust it. Um, maybe, you know, I have to do some alignment and move things around. Um, but with the padding feature, I don't have to worry about any of those tricks again. I can just place it sort of where I want it in regards to the button and then go ahead and click into the group and paste it, and the background's gonna automatically adjust um, around the icon. That's amazing. Yeah, so it saves a lot of time. Some of these things seem pretty simple, but um, it's gonna come in, in really handy as you're working quickly. Yep. Okay, so um, let's talk about some other use cases that this might be useful for. So I'm going to show another simple case. So in this case, you may want um, to do like a text bubble or something. So um, I'm going to round the corners and I'm just going to hack it here a little bit. Just do. I wanted and this one. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. So an, another thing about Content Aware is um, about the padding feature. The direction that you actually want uh, your um, your group to grow in will be based off of the content inside of it. So if I wanted this to uh, grow, you know from both sides, I'm going to have it set on middle. But in this text bubble shape, I may want it to grow to the right. So I'm actually going to change my text alignment um, to be aligned left. And then as I change my text, oops, it's actually going to grow in the direction that I want it to. So to show how that might be different, I'm actually just going to select the background. I'm going to have my text bubble be in the other direction. And then I'm going to change the text here. So as I change it, you can see it's growing in the other direction. <laughs> Great. And so is there any way with um, area text and point text to sort of set it up so that as I type, there's a fixed width and it it's grows to the bottom? Yep, absolutely. So. Um, you know, if you were working with a tooltip, let's make this a little bit longer. You may want to uh, um, define the space for which it would grow in. Oops. 
Um, I'm going to, this adjusted the padding, so I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna change the space on the area text and then I'm gonna hit tilde here and bring this back up. And actually option so that they're the same size. Okay, um, and I'm gonna make this text a little bit smaller so I can fill it up maybe to this side. So I'm gonna fill it up with some uh, lorem ipsum text real quick, which I'm going to use a plugin for. So nice. we have our plugin panel on the, um, you can switch to it right below the layers panel here on the left-hand side. It, I may be covering it, but it's right below the layers panel. Um, I added our lorem ipsum plugin for, by, by selecting this plus sign. And then um, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it with place text using my last settings, but you can set some settings on that um, yourself. So this, as you're typing, and actually maybe I'll just delete some here and just type some jargon. You can see as I start typing, it's actually just gonna fill this up. Nice. Um, and if I do go past it, the area text is going to maintain, um, but I could then um, add or subtract text here and it will maintain that padding for you. Great, and then what happens if it's point text? So point text, this is point text. Okay, and so what's, then, yeah, what's gonna happen here is as I type, it's gonna, it grows to the it's gonna grow. And then if I, that you've specified. Mm -hmm, if I hit enter and maybe I'm doing a list, um, it will just keep expanding. Cool. Yeah. So we've got some overlapping bubbles here. Yeah, so this is like a really fun and easy way to not only create all sorts of different buttons that will resize as the content changes, but it's like a really easy way to, to mock up a text exchange mm -hmm. um, exactly. and like and have that not be a super painful process when you're typing in different things. Yep. Okay, so let's switch over a little bit and let's build out something maybe a little bit more complex, like a card. And what are some of the use cases that this can be helpful for um, something like that. So I'm gonna just take some text here. I'm just gonna mop up, mock up a little card really quickly. So I have a title. And uh, let's make a little travel card. So Kendall in the chat says, this is what I needed to hear right now since I'm designing a ton of screens today. That's really great. We're, we're pumped to hear that, Kendall. I'm, I'm curious what you're designing. We'd love to hear how you're using XD. Eric says he's surprised that it didn't push down on its own. Yeah, that's, that's just the way that point text works. So it's yeah. gonna grow as long as it can um, out to the right. Correct, so yeah, so area text is gonna keep growing in one direction depending on the, um, the orientation of your text properties. Area text um, currently is just going to stay static unless you change, um, and cha unless you change the position of, of the square uh, or you resize it. We are working on um, some ideas around um, having that be more dynamic. So definitely keep looking back for that. Okay, so here I'm just building out a little card and I'm gonna use that button that we made. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how you can start to nest these things, uh, these groups. Let's make this lowercase. Okay, so we've got a little card here. That's supposed to be a description. Okay, so I start here, and let's make this simple to start with. I'm gonna turn on the padding feature. So, as I showed you guys, um, it's gonna automatically read what those paddings are. Um, I like to come in on Canvas and actually adjust uh, each side to make sure they're the same. It's much easier to actually do with this feature than it is when I'm setting it up. Um, so I group it and then uh, we'll just choose, choose those. So now I know each side is even. 
Um, so I can resize this and it's gonna maintain that spacing and you can see how that area text is adjusting as you resize it. Okay, but maybe I actually wanted to add a button in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this button and I'm going to put it where I want it. So I want it somewhere below this and actually I'm gonna, well, I'll change the, I'll change the text once I actually place it in the group. So I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna click into the group and I'm gonna paste it in. And you can see that the button, uh, the background adjusted to fit the button in it. Um, this may feel a little close to me, so I can start to drag this around and you can see that the background is gonna adjust with it. So I can actually move this anywhere and it's gonna show me what, what that adjustment is that I'm making. Yeah. Cool, so I'm actually, I actually kind of want this to overlap and come off of the box. So there is a cool feature which is negative padding. So I'm gonna again hit the tilde button and I'm actually going to start to pull this up and put it where I want it. Nice. So you can have negative padding, you can have it falling off of the background. Um, and then, you know, maybe I want this to say book. Now, actually, I'm gonna take out this icon and readjust it in the middle. Hi, Richard. Um, no, no Howard today, as far as I know. Um, we are doing a segment called Designing XD. I'm Ainsley and this is Hillary, and we are real live designers on XD, and we're demoing new features that just came out this month, mm -hmm. just came out this week. Yep. And so right now we're talking about content aware, and um, different layout rules that we're starting to add to let you really, really design in a smart way. Yeah, so right now we're looking at building out a card um, and we've turned on the padding feature and some quick things we have here. Um, you can see the different padding values and how they highlight on canvas. We also have negative padding so that your objects inside the group can hang off of the background. Um, and Earlier I shared some keyboard shortcuts to help you do some on canvas changing, so I'll just bring those over here again. So as you guys are playing, you can test them out. It's a little reminder for you. Okay, and so getting back to the card, I may also wanna put a picture in the background of this. So I'm gonna, again, just, I'm gonna pull something from um, a plugin. This is one that I really love using. It's the Unsplash one, so I can just, Click on this. Uh, I'm gonna type in Yosemite and see what comes up. And it's just gonna place in a picture to the object that you have selected. Okay, but now I can't read my text, so I'm just gonna go <laughs> ahead and make those white and see if that helps. Nice. A little bit. Um, so there was a question up in the chat that I don't wanna lose. Mm -hmm about um, how to get started with XD there and mm -hmm. learning XD for an internship. Um, and, and they said that they're familiar with Illustrator and that's, that's really a great place to come from. I think a lot of us who, um, a lot of the foundational designers for XD are really familiar with Illustrator. I'm, I'm a person who comes from a background of, of being really familiar with like um, the vector logic of Illustrator. So a lot of those same patterns exist in XD. So it'll feel really familiar to you to work in here, but then there's there's very specific prototyping capabilities for you to be able to design um, using kind of that vector logic and, and lots of other things, and then prototype your designs in um, the next tab over. So you can, um, just for those of you who are, are like, have never seen XD before, our whole thing is that you can design, prototype, and share. So once you design your screens, you can wire them up and specify those interactions, and then you can share that um, with your colleagues or your clients or whomever. Um, so the other thing that uh, to say about learning XD is there's a ton of great resources online. So there's a, a bunch of great tutorials if you're, if you're a video tutorial person. I certainly am, um, and there's a lot of resources on, um, on actually I, I think Let's XD is a great place to start. 
Yep. That's Howard Pinsky's site, and he has just like, amazing tutorials and resources there. Yeah, I would definitely recommend checking out letsxd.com. Um, there's some really great bite-sized tutorials in there that get um, into some really juicy features. So for sure, check that out. There should be one on Content-Aware, um, which we're talking about now, um, yep. which definitely help you get started. And Richard Ellis says, tips on getting an internship or a part-time job. Well, I think you should check different job boards. Full-time student, working from home. I think there's a lot of remote jobs out there right now. So I think really good job boards are, um, Behance has a, a really good job board. You can check Designer News. They have a job board and Dribble. Um, D-R-I-B-B-B-L-E, has a really good design job board. So those are great places to check for internships or, or part-time jobs. Yeah. I think just getting out and uh, going to some design events and things like that, meeting people is definitely helpful as well. And no, you do not need to know any HTML to use XD. No. No real code except for um, some code snippets when you export your um, design specs. Yep. Cool. Okay, so now we have a card in here, and um, I'm just going to make a really long label, which maybe I wouldn't actually do, but just to show you how this nested group is going to grow, and it's also going to respect the um, padding of its outer group. So if I wanted to add more into this, you can see that the, the image and the background is actually going to grow with it as the button grows as well. So that's kind of the last bit about this one. We're just going to build out one more um, UI element and then move on to some components and states, refresh, and, and maybe a cool example of something you could do um, with states. So, OK, we're going to build a form field. So I'm, again, just going to bump up the border here so you guys can see it. I'm going to add a color. Um, and maybe put some rounded corners on this a little bit. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is build a form, like a login form field here. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is to talk about um, area text a little bit. And so well, why some of these features are on by default and not. So you'll probably notice that responsive resize is on by default. And the reason for that is, you know, in most cases when you're resizing your um, your groups, this is how you actually want the behavior to work. Right. Um, so if I'm resizing this, I don't want to stretch. If right. I'm pulling it to the right, I don't want the, the text to stretch yeah. or, or the radius properties to mm -hmm. um, distort. I want just it to grow, to be longer. Correct. And so so here, you know, when you're resizing this, you, you want to maintain um, that that space relationship as you're, as you're resizing it. Um, but the thing with padding is that it's kind of a 50-50 use case. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about those use cases. And so this is why the feature isn't one of our default features. Um, so for a, a label like this, for example, I'm actually going to turn it into a regular group again, just so we can avoid components for the moment. So when you're working on a text label, you actually want it to fill up this space, right? So as you're typing, you want it, you want whatever it is to actually fill in the space and you don't want the padding to necessarily grow. So what I can, sh I can show you what I mean is that if when I turn this on, it's reading this really long padding, essentially. So if I start to, oops, I actually have it on the whole group. I wanted it on this group. So it's got 299 here on this side. And if I start typing, it's actually going to grow this out. But that's actually not what I want. So you can see there are some groups that you want, but that doesn't mean it's not helpful for things like form fields um, when you start putting them together. So here, if I, you know, I wanted a email login and maybe a password. So let's just type this email. 
And then this is not actually my email, but I'm gonna type it in. And then password. And let's just do some stars for a minute. Nice. Okay, so I've got this. I make it a group and I'm gonna turn on padding. You may in the future wanna, you know, turn this into a sign up um, where you actually want more, um, you want more form, form fields in here. So you can start to copy and paste them and add them in. And then here you see it's just gonna dynamically respond with it. So even though you don't want it maybe on this element, it's super helpful on the group level. Um, some other things you may need to add in, for example, maybe some check mark, so I can put it where I want it. I can click in here, and then obviously our button, which I'm just gonna copy and paste here. So you can see how quickly I started to build that form field, which would have taken much longer without padding to readjust all of that. And again, if I started wanting to delete things, and move these up, it's just gonna be super dynamic That's and really so nice. quickly. And you don't have to worry about those things, but you can always go in and make adjustments. Yeah, this is amazing. So this takes something that would have been a tedious design task and makes it really intuitive. And that's what we try to do a lot in XD is think about what the intention is, what we think you want to do with something and sort of like jump a few steps ahead for you and, and build in those shortcuts. And so that was the thinking behind responsive resize, that's the thinking behind content aware and all of these new layout properties. So what we, uh, what we assume you want to do based on patterns of usage, how can we give you tools that kind of do that already? And then you can adjust those manually um, or turn them off if you want. Yep. So this is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Munir about tips for a designer who designs websites in XC and also does the front end development of the website. That's really cool. I hope you're referring to yourself. That's <laughs> such a powerful combination to be a, both the designer and the engineer um, because you get to sort of bring your own vision to life. Um, I'm not sure what tips you're looking for in particular. In XD, if you're both the designer and the front end developer, you have a lot of control over choosing um, you know, the pixel specific layout and like setting up your, your grid mm -hmm. so that as you're implementing it, you know exactly how things are spaced. And of course, like you can export hex codes and um, dimensions of things. So I'm not sure what in particular you're, you're looking for tips on, but basically you would, design to the fullest your um, your website layout and, and interactions in XD, and then you could either just take your um, XD document and kind of inspect it and see, hold down the um, option shortcuts to sort of see all your pixel dimensions between things as you're building um, in your uh, text editor, or you could export yourself dev specs. So that's something that I, I suppose we could we could just show you really quickly when yeah. you go over to the share mode. Um, I think, let me just see if I have a... So another thing I think Ainsley touched on just while I'm wiring something up so we can show you the, um, the dev specs. Um, I think what she hit on is that XD is a really great place that you can get started with your designs. Um, if you are the developer also, I think if you just start and code, you end up constraining yourself a lot. So using XD and starting there just to iterate um, and not feel super, really quickly and not feel super constrained will be really helpful for your workflow. And then, um, you know, testing things out in prototype mode. Um, and then, yeah, so once you get in, once you finalize and you're ready and sh uh, you can move over to share mode. Um, which is one of these top tabs here. And um, 
It's going to show you what flow you have wired up, and then uh, you can go ahead and um, give a title to your to your prototype. You can choose if you want um, to create a essentially a prototype walkthrough for review, which has comments, or um, a dev spec, which is the development one here. So I'll select that. Um, you can choose, you know, what platform you're, um, you want to export your assets at. I'll just keep it web for now. And then, uh, you know, if you want a password or not. Um, and then you can create a link. And we'll just take a second. Right, and so once you've created this link, now you can go view those specs on the web and you can inspect every element that's on each page and, and it gives you all the information you need to implement that in code. So you can see here on Hillary's screen, we have the overall screen size, the colors, the type, specs, um, and the interaction. So this is all, um, this is all things that you can translate into code and then we have some CSS snippets. Yeah. Um, so Munir is saying he, the specific tips he was interested in or they're interested in is um, layouts, positioning elements. So I think just to really quickly answer that, I would say using grids is a, a huge mm -hmm. key in designing something that you're going to build. So yeah. making sure that, um, and that's something you can do in XD. You can turn on um, a grid and you can specify if that, you know, what ratio you want that to be. I think we do things based in increment increments of eight and 12 a lot. Yeah. So I would design things on a grid so that when you are laying it out and, and talking about the space in between things, there's a predictable amount of, of pixels between things. Yeah. So I hope that helps. And we're gonna keep showing you yeah. more fun stuff in XE. Yeah, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of creating a component and adding some states and then some fun thing you might do with um, padding on a component. And then we're going to jump over to another feature with Ainsley. So let's get that going so we can see some other cool stuff. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to turn padding onto this group. I'm actually going to start without a uh, icon in there. So I have my button. Um, so just as a reminder for everyone uh, to turn a, a group into a component, um, you can either do it here in the property inspector. There's this component section with a plus button. Um, there's also your components section in, um, in your asset panel, uh, which is accessed here just above the layers panel. So you can swap between them. And then uh, there's this plus button there. And then there's a keyboard shortcut, which is what I usually use, which is command K. So uh, the first instance you convert to a component is what we call your master. And just to quickly review um, a little bit about what that means is when I make a copy, that means the copy is uh, my instance. Um, so now any changes that I make to my master is actually going to um, propagate to all instances, unless I make some sort of override, for example, oops, let's um, change. So that happened because you have padding on, padding turned on and it's yeah. keeping a fixed amount of padding. Yeah, which we can talk a little bit about again. But so I made the rounded corners on the instance. So now when I um, adjust this one, it doesn't change because I've already overridden that property. But if I have another instance that doesn't have that overridden, it will still propagate. So that's the basics of how components are going to work. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, creating states now. So we're going to add a state to this button. Um, so this is something that you do from the master. I'm actually going to keep an instance down here. Um, so here I'm just going to add a hover state. And we're just going to do um, just hover state for today but you may want to add multiple and there's custom states you can do um, and you can add as many as you want. So now I'm on my hover state and I want to make a change for when I hover over the button. So I'm just going to change that to like a lighter yellow. 
And just to test what that looks like, I'm gonna swap back to the default state, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hover over the master. And nice. you can see that it's switching. So we've switched into the preview window mm -hmm. to see those changes take effect. Yeah, that's a good point. So in order to test them out, um, you you're gonna wanna uh, hit play in that upper right hand corner and then it's gonna open up the preview window. And it's also gonna add any states that you've added to your instances. So you'll be able to hover over those as well. That's really nice because I don't know about you, but I often don't realize what I need to be a reusable component until I've designed like 50 screens. Mm -hmm. And so if I have made something a master, but I haven't added states on it, then it's really nice that you can go back to that master and add states and that'll automatically propagate to all those 50 yeah. artboards or more mm -hmm. um, where those instances are. And mm -hmm. you don't have to like go back in and add each one. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so now if I want to change the text on my master, I have the padding feature on. Um, so I can just go ahead and change my text. And you see it's automatically propagating to its instances. And when I make that change on the master, it's actually also going to propagate to its all of its states. And so if I come to the instance, I can select this and I can swap it and see that it's also changing there. Nice. OK, so one thing about states is that when you're on an instance um, and you make a change to uh, the state, that text isn't going to automatically um, go to all of the different states. So you mm -hmm. will need to make that, and that's um, you know, because as you're making overrides, you may not want something to change on all of them, so you'll have to go in manually um, and make those changes. So uh, in the past, before padding was, was a thing, you would have to do the same uh, background change and padding adjustments on each state. But now with the padding feature, I can actually change the button text and I don't have to worry about these values because when I switch, I can just do that change and it will automatically um, make sure that those values are matched. Nice. So super helpful and a big time saver for states. Very cool. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is just create uh, one more component and then, and maybe I'll just start with this. Um, I'm gonna make it a new component. I'm gonna make a card really quickly like we did above. Just to show you, actually maybe I will take the card we made above here. And I'm just gonna delete this. Actually, I'm going to first set that to well, let's try it with this and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna turn this into a component and I'm actually gonna add the hover state. And what I want to happen on the hover state is I want the card to grow. So I'm going to jump into this group. Like it's sort of like coming at you a little bit and like rising forward. Exactly, yeah. So I'm gonna hit the tilde and the shift because I want it to grow on all sides. And I'm going to, it's actually what it did is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it on either side and the top, not the bottom, because I wanna keep that negative padding. So I'm gonna first make this go up a little bit, and then I'm gonna hit tilde and option, and I'm gonna adjust these sides. So now what's gonna happen when I swap back over, let's hit play to preview this, is I'm gonna hover over this and you'll see the card growing. Cool. And you could also do that with the button, so the button grows too, which would actually be kind of a cool, we could do that with this button really quickly. So I'm on my master and the hover state, I actually want it to grow on all sides, so I'm gonna hit tilde and option, or no, shift, and make the button grow a little bit. And now when I preview that, it's gonna grow on all sides. And so it's auto animating. Is that something that you have set up or it's it yep. it's automatic? So so both. So what I did when I added the state is um, 
And let me delete this date really quickly so I can show you guys. Um, I hit this plus button and there's either a new custom state or a hover state. This is automatically adding the interaction for me. Right. And what that looks like over here in prototype mode, we can select it and it's actually on the default state. It hit the, put the trigger as hover and the action is auto animate. So it's gonna animate between that. I could switch that and just have, um, you know, a normal transition and it would act a little bit differently. Yeah, so it would, it would flip more abruptly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the auto animate feature is a really nice feature um, for hover state. So I definitely recommend playing around with it. Yeah, so that's a nice little thing. I, again, talking about thing we design trying to almost guess what you're going to do based on um, repeated behaviors. So we assume that a lot of you are going to want to make hover states because that's a very common use case for our, a, a micro interaction. And we're also going to assume that when you have made that hover state that you want it to transition really nicely. So we just sort of do that for you automatically so that it's it saves you that time. Yeah. Cool, so I think that is most of what we wanted to show with um, with auto with uh, content aware layout and the padding feature. Um, so yeah, definitely. As Ainsley said, if you want to learn more about it, definitely check out that letsxd.com. I think I have it written over here. Yeah. Um, there'll be some more tutorials on that uh, that you can check out. All right. So now I'm going to show another new feature that came out this week with the um, latest release of XD. I think it is um, XD 26 that just came out. So um, uh, a, a big feature was what Hillary just showed, which was content aware and different layout properties. And another really fun one is the star tool. So I'm gonna show you all that. Um, and then there's a couple of questions from the chat, which we'll all talk through right before I transition. Um, Munir is asking what, where, what talents the Adobe XD team looks for when we hire UX designers? Well, I think one thing um, is like experience on, on other products. It's helpful and kind of, it's kind of necessary for you to have worked on another software product to be able to understand the, the rhythm of how we design and, and the different kind of components to that. So um, that's one thing. Oh, we always look at your your kind of visual design skills and the way that you're able to solve a problem. So we'll look at your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And then a big thing for us is just being able to talk about yeah. the decisions you've made. So in any kind of real design scenario, there's your ideal of what you would like the design solution to be and look like and, and feel like. And then there's the engineering constraints of um, what you can actually do. Yeah. So we want someone who's able to talk through the final design that they arrived at and the different kind of like compromises and hard choices they had to make yeah, exactly. along the way. Yeah. Because it's there's always trade-offs. There's, um, we could tell you many, many stories about the things that we thought we were gonna be able to ship, but then based on time constraints, um, we had to um, say, okay, this aspect of this feature is more important. So um, being able to talk through that process mm -hmm. is is one of the, the top things we look for. Yeah. And then of course, like, are you nice? And um, <laughs> you know, does it seem like you would be a, a fun person to work with yeah, for uh, five days a week? All right, so I am now going to show you all really quickly the star tool. And so the way to do that is from the polygon tool. So we already have this polygon tool in our design toolbar. And you can click on that or the shortcut to access that is um, hitting Y. So I'm going to hold down shift so this is nice and proportional. And I have my triangle, as you can see. And you probably already know that um, to make this polygon have a different amount of sides, 
uh, I'm going to hold shift out from this angle. Um, you can tick up, you can press the up arrow. And so as I'm, as I still have um, shift held and I'm like dragging to give a width and height, I'm pressing the up arrow key and that's giving this several more sides. So that you can also do here in the property inspector. Um, and I think, I can't remember if there's UI. I don't think there's UI on the actual thing. So, okay, I am gonna do that one more time and give this five sides for a star. Y, hold down shift, tick it up. And now I have this polygon that um, is a pentagram. So I have this affordance in my shape to change the roundedness of the corners. Nice. So I'm gonna give that. And then I also now have this ability to change the radius. So I'm gonna pull this little circle in and that changes the radius of this star. So that is pretty cool. And I can also change that here. I can make edits to that and make it like a super skinny starfish star or a super cute and fat star. <laughs> and I am going to give it a nice color and border. What do I want? Oh, whoops. And so now, now I have this. And so from here, I can edit the properties of this. I can make um, many more uh, shapes. And this works with Boolean uh, operations nice. and Masks, I can, let's see. I don't have a, a picture loaded up, mm -hmm. but I could drop a picture into this. Let me see if I have anything in my downloads folder. Hmm. I do this a lot too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here's something that I've used, um, just like a random, So, so this is your nice. star tool and you can um, have a lot of fun with it and give it like lots of different sides. Nice. So you can make really fun kind of badge elements. I'm gonna just make a bunch of different variations of a star so you all can see. Yeah, so this would be super useful. We talked about earlier if you were creating like a travel app and you needed um, some stars to be able to rate things. You can just really quickly do that um, and not have to worry about designing it up as you're wireframing. Um, so it can definitely help you with some like fun placeholder icons and, and shapes. Yeah, so um, this is the new star tool in XD. I love it. And you can see it here in the assets panel. So this now has the name of the, the JPEG that I dropped into it. But these are all objects in your, um, sorry, I always confuse layers panel and assets panel. Yeah, I, and I say one <laughs> when I mean the other. Yeah. In your layers panel. So this is my artboard here and it has all of these elements that are on my artboard. <laughs> and um, the you can see here that these are still polygons. And unless I click into this, it'll maintain all of those properties. So I think that is about it for our time today. We've had a lot of fun showing you all some of the new features in XD26, the January release of XD. We Hillary showed you Content Aware, which she did a lot of good working work on. Um, I swooped in at the end and showed you how to make a star, um, both of which will be very valuable in your workflows, we hope. So thanks for joining us in the chat. Hope you will have a great Friday and a great weekend and, and keep talking to us, keep letting us know what you're liking in the new releases. We look at Twitter, we listen to what you all need um, and tell us what you don't like, tell us what is frustrating because yeah, we um, are listening and we will work on it. So thank you so much. Um, this has been Designing XD on Adobe Live. Have a great one. Thanks, guys. <laughs>